Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here, and today we're continuing our buyer's guide with my top 10 all mountain slash mid travel trail bikes for 2020. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We do mountain bike buyer's guides, reviews, as well as vlogs based in Australia. So before we start looking at which bikes I recommend, let's start with defining what an all mountain bike is. So for me, it's a bike that has around 130 to 150 millimeters of travel. It's a bike that prioritizes descending over climbing, however, it's still relatively an all-rounder. It's more of a descender's trail bike. And as I said, it's still versatile enough to have fun on more undulating terrain, and it still kind of retains that poppy nature of a shorter travel bike. So if you prefer a bike that balances descending with climbing, I definitely recommend checking out my shorter travel trail bike buyer's guide for this year. I'll put the link in the description for that one. And that's gonna be a bit more of an all-rounder as opposed to these bikes, which definitely do prioritize descending a little bit. So for me, this is my favorite kind of genre of bike. I do prefer something still efficient, but I do definitely prioritize descending. And for most kind of intermediate riders that do prefer descending, I definitely recommend these bikes because with enduro bikes, you do definitely lose a bit of that fun factor. And these bikes are getting really capable, so you don't really need that extra travel. Unless you live next to a bike park, I really wouldn't recommend going any more travel than these kind of bikes, unless you are starting to hit some decent drops, as well as some really rough terrain at really high speeds. So for this buyer's guide, all prices will be in Australian dollars. So if you aren't familiar, one US dollar equals 1.5 Australian dollars and one British pound equals 1.8 Australian dollars. So in your markets, these prices will be a little bit different based on the conversion. And as well, some bikes in certain countries will be a little bit cheaper as well. So in my shorter travel trail bike buyer's guide, I had some bikes in the 1,000 to 2,000 Australian dollar price category. So that's kind of lower 1000s for most of your kind of British as well as US markets. However, in the more all mountain category, they kind of started around about that 2000 or just below $2,000 price category. So we're definitely going to focus on those and we're going to go from 2000 to $4,000. So I know this may seem like a lot for some people, but if you do want an all mountain bike that's going to last, you're definitely going to have to spend just over $2,000 to get that. All right. Okay, so let's get into the bikes. So the first bike I'm going to recommend going from cheapest to most expensive is the Polygon Siskiyou T7. So having ridden this bike a little bit, the first word that comes to my mind is fun. This is just a really fun bike at a really great price point. So if you are looking for your first real serious dual suspension or mountain bike, this is definitely one that I would recommend. So the T7 comes in a recommended retail price of 2,399 Australian dollars, but it's sold direct through bicycles online in Australia as well as the US for $2,099. So it's really affordable. And a few years ago, you would have been called crazy if you're gonna get a proper modern trail bike with through axles as well as a dropper post for $2,099. That's crazy. So the T7 comes with size specific wheel slices. So in a small and medium, you're getting 27.5 inch wheels and the medium through to extra large, you're getting 29ers. So in the 29er, you're getting 140 millimeters of travel. And then in the 27.5, you're getting 150 millimeters of travel. So looking at the spec, you get a RockShox Recon up front, as well as an X-Fusion rear shock with a lockout as well as rebound adjustment. You also get a tubeless ready wheel set with tubeless ready tires, and you get the bulletproof Shimano Dior 1x10 drivetrain. And with that, you're also getting hydraulic Shimano brakes. And lastly, you get a thoroughly modern cockpit, 780 millimeters bars to keep your confidence high on the descents. So the geometry isn't too radical, but it provides a well-balanced package for a modern trail bike. You've got a 400 millimeter reach on the size large, so nothing too crazy, but as I said, keeps it nice and balanced. And then you've got a decently slack head angle at 66.5 degrees. And that's on the 29ers, and then on the 27.5, you're getting a 66 degree head angle, so a little bit slacker. The seat angle is 74 degrees, and then the chain stays are 435 on the size large in the 29er as well. Having ridden the T7, it's got a nice firm suspension, so it's nice and efficient, and because the geometry is not too radical, it makes it a really versatile bike. But the bike doesn't let you down on the descents at all. It's still got a 66.5 degree head angle, and because it's done a nice progressive rear suspension, when the big hits come, it definitely supports you really well. So it's a really great bike for a wide range of applications. So the T7 is probably the best value true all mountain bike that I definitely recommend. It's an awesome package and it's really gonna suit someone that's looking for a trail bike with a little bit more forgiveness. So the next bike on our list is one for more of our UK viewers. However, with import tax and GST, it's still relatively well priced for Australia and that's the Vitus Mythic VRS. 
So once you factor in GST and import tax, you're looking at around 2,900 Australian dollars for the Mythic. So the Mythic is a brand new frame for this year and it adds a budget option to Vitus's already great value range of bikes. The VRS comes in both 27.5 and 29 inch and that's for all sizes and it's got 140 millimeters of rear as well as front travel. So looking at the geometry, the reach is slightly longer on the 27.5 inch bikes. However, when you factor in the taller stack on the 29, I think the geometry and reach would feel pretty similar on the bikes. So for me personally, I'd probably recommend the 29er for this application. So we're gonna look at the geometry of the size large 29er. So looking at the seat angle, you've got a 75.6 degree seat angle, so nice and steep. You've got a 462 millimeter reach, and then you've got longer 445 millimeter chainstays, as well as a slack 66 degree head angle. So a really impressive geometry package for the money. So what's even better than the geometry is the spec that you get for the money. So you get the impressive X-Fusion sweep fork up front, and that's mixed with the X-Fusion O2 rear shock, and that comes with rebound as well as a lockout. You also get a 150 millimeter brand X dropper on the size large, and then you also get Shimano MT401 hydraulic brakes, as well as the SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain. So where I'm really impressed for the spec for the money is you get awesome tires. So you get the soft compound Schwalbe snakeskin Magic Marys up front, and then you've got the same compound hand stamped tires in the rear. So really, really good tires. And they've also matched with tubeless ready rims, which are 30 millimeter internal width. So an awesome package there. Rounding off the spec package, you get Vitus as well as Nukeproof finishing kit. So the Nukeproof stuff is always awesome to see. And then you've got decently wide bars with a 45 millimeter stem. Another good thing to see is the bar width is dependent on the size. So you're getting wider bars as you go up the sizes. So if you're a small rider, you're not going to have 800 millimeter bars. So that's good to see. So looking at the Vitus, it's a great all round package. The only downfall I can see is visually looking at the frame. Some of the hardware around the pivot doesn't look as nice as kind of other bikes in this price point. However, that's all speculative. I haven't ridden the bike and I haven't seen it in person. It was just kind of what I saw in the images. So that's something to keep an eye on if you're looking at this bike. So the next bike's a bit of a repeat from one early in the list, and that's the Polygon Siskiyou T8, so the upgraded version of the T7. So the T8 retails for $3,299, but it's sold at $2,999. Again, that's at Bicycles Online. So what you get for the extra cash compared to the T7, you get an 11-speed drivetrain, and that's a mixed match of XT and SLX with a 46-tooth cassette. You're also getting upgraded brakes, so you're getting the Shimano M615 brakes, so they're awesome brakes. But the main improvement that you're going to get is with the suspension. So you're getting the RockShox Revelation up front, as well as the RockShox RT3 Deluxe rear shock. So that's an awesome shock to see at this price point. So the main benefits you're going to see with the suspension, you've got the stiffer fork up front, so the Revelation's got 35mm stanchions, so nice and wide, and that's going to make the bike track a little bit better in the rough. But the main thing you're going to notice compared to the T7, the shock as well as the fork are going to be a bit more sensitive. So it's going to be a bit more supple at the beginning of the stroke, which complements this suspension really well, but it's still going to have that nice supportive nature that I really liked about the T7. Okay, so now into something a bit different, and that's the Merida 140 600. So if you followed my buyer's guide for the short travel bikes, you'd know how much I love the Merida 120. It's an awesome bike, and I also reviewed that as well. It's nice and poppy, really efficient, and I really like the way that the float link suspension works. What's good about the 140, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, so the 140 retains a lot of what I liked about the 120, just in a package with a little bit more forgiveness. So before you leave a comment, I know a few of you would have noticed that I didn't include the 140 400, so there's actually 140 at a cheaper price point. However, it doesn't come with tubeless ready rims, and that's kind of a deal breaker for me. Having a tubeless wheel set on these bikes is definitely something that you really need. Traction, puncture protection. And to upgrade to a tubeless wheel set, it's a bit of an investment. So it's definitely good that a lot of these cheaper bikes already on this list had tubeless ready wheels as well as rims. So that's kind of a deal breaker for me on the 400. However, the 600 does have a tubeless ready wheel set as well as a really impressive spec package. So let's take a closer look at the spec. So you get a RockShox sector up front with 150 millimeters of travel. And then you've got a RockShox Select Plus taking care of the 140 millimeters of rear suspension. So that's got rebound adjustment as well as a lockout. You also get the reliable Shimano MT501 brakes. I really like these brakes and in the future you can just upgrade them to the M520 calipers and you get a nice solid four pot setup. You also get an NX Eagle drivetrain as well as those 29mm internal tubeless rims. So as I said, 
tubeless ready rims, and then you've got some awesome tires too. So you've got a 2.6 DHR 3C in the Max Terra, and then in the rear you've got a 2.6 Recon in the dual compound, so nice and fast rolling there too. However, one downside, you only get a 125 millimeter dropper, so it would be nice to see a longer dropper on this bike. A lot of the cheap bikes had 150, so bit of a letdown there. So on the Geo front, it's almost identical to the 120. However, you get a slacker head angle, so it's 66.3 degrees. In a size large, you've got a more conventional reach, so 455 millimeters, and then you've got a 75 degree seat angle as well as 435 chain stays. So as you can see, the 140 is an awesome bike for the money. You get really great spec. However, riding them back to back with the 120, I didn't necessarily feel like there was a lot more that you were getting with the 140 over the 120. I felt like the 120 was just as capable and those 29 inch wheels just rolled over things a little bit better than the 27.5 inch wheels. So it just begs the question, if Merida had a 140 millimeter travel 29er, how good would that bike be? So I'm keen to see if they do that in the future, but the 140 is still a great bike and if you do prefer 27.5 inch wheels, then it's a great bike to look at. So the next bike's a super popular one. I know a few people left some comments in my short travel trail bike why this wasn't included. We was getting to it, but it's more of an all mountain bike and it's almost pushing towards enduro categories now because it has 150 millimeters of rear suspension and 160 millimeters up front. And that's the Canyon Spectral AL 5.1. So looking at the spec of this bike, it's pretty damn crazy what you get for the money. Canyon being a direct-to-consumer brand, they can offer really good spec for the money and you're definitely seeing that here, there's no exception. And also Canyon listened to their customers' feedback from last year's model and made some key spec changes. So at this price, the suspension package is really unparalleled. You're getting a 160mm pike up front and then you're getting a super deluxe select plus in the rear. So that's an awesome shock to see at this price point. You definitely see that shock on bikes that cost almost six, seven thousand dollars. So that's awesome to see. You also get really good rims too. So you're getting race face arc 30 rims, and then you're also getting a max grip 2.5 DHR up front. So that's really showing the intentions of what this bike are. It's intended to be pushed really hard. That's a pretty slow rolling tire. However, it's going to give you a lot and lot of grip. So it's good to see on this bike if you are going to be pushing it. You're also getting a Haas brand dropper with 150 millimeters of drop on the size large. One downside, you're getting guide T brakes. Personally, I'm not a fan of them, but you do get a 200 millimeter rotor, so that's definitely gonna stop you a bit better than say something with a smaller rotor. And then you've got a nice short stem with wide bars as well. One thing to note is that the geometry is a bit more conventional than what the suspension travel indicates. You do get a nice 66 degree head angle. However, the reach is relatively short at 460 millimeters on the size large. But the stack is pretty high on this bike, so it would be a pretty roomy 460 millimeters. The seat angle is not too steep either, it's 74.5 degrees. However, I feel Canyon kind of went for a more conventional approach to broaden the bike's horizon compared to the more enduro strive that they have. So it will be good in more broad applications, and for Australia, we don't have a lot of super high speed trails, so something that's slightly shorter does work a bit better in our conditions. So the Spectral is probably the least trail bike on this list in terms of travel numbers. So as I said, the Spectral is not an overly long bike, so it's definitely gonna excel in more technical, slower speed conditions as opposed to really fast speed descents. But this does mean it's gonna help you on bigger hits like jumps and drops, so it's good to see. But as I said, it is gonna be a bit of a sacrifice as kind of a bit more pedaling efficiency and poppiness. However, if you are riding trails that are a bit more pedally or you want something a bit more poppy, then you could just run less sag as well. So that's something you could do too. So the next bike is another one that's new for 2020 and it's a bike that a few people questioned why it wasn't on my shorter travel bike buyer's guide. Patience, I was getting to it and that's the Trek Fuel EX7. And I know a few people are going to question why the EX5 isn't on this list as well and there's one main reason for that. So Trek tuned the new suspension on the Fuel to be pretty active so it's going to work really well with a shock that has three positions so it's got an open, a mid mode as well as a lockout and the EX5 only has a shock that has the open as well as lockout mode. So the EX7 has a shock that, as I said, it's got the three positions. And when you're descending down more loose technical terrain, leave it in an open position and you're going to have that nice magic carpet ride, plenty of traction there. However, when you're on more pedally flowy trails, I definitely recommend putting this bike in the mid position. And that's going to firm up the suspension a little bit, give you a bit more of a platform to push against. And that will broaden the applications of this bike. So it's going to really work well in flowy trails as well as more technical trails as well. So it just broadens the application of this bike. So for a major brand, the spec is pretty good for the money. So you get the brand new for 2020 RockShox 35 Gold up front, and that's got 140 millimeters of travel. 
So this fork has the older motion control damper and it's got the new impressive debonair spring. So it's gonna work really well. And as I said in the rear, you've got the Fox DPS rear shock. So as I said, there's three positions and that's controlling the 130 millimeters of rear travel. In terms of braking, you get the Shimano MT401 brakes. So not the best brakes at this price point, but they still will do the job well. I really like Shimano brakes. And then you've also got the NX Eagle 12 speed drivetrain. A big plus is a good wheel set and tires. So you get the Lion Comp 30 millimeter internal rims and they've wrapped in team issue XR4 tires. So I really like the XR4s and they've got a 2.6 width. So really nice. I really like these tires, as I said. However, the one downside, you're only getting a 130 millimeter dropper. It's kind of a must to have a 150 millimeter dropper on a lot of these bikes these days. So it's definitely not as good to see a 130 at this price point. So the Geo is pretty good too. So the Geo is pretty good too. You also get a flip chip. So that's something that we haven't seen so far on this list and that adds to the bike's versatility. So looking at the Geo on a size large, in the high position, you've got a 475 millimeter reach. So nice and roomy, a 75.5 degree seat angle and a 66.5 head angle. And then in the low position, you've got a 470 millimeter reach, 75 degree seat angle and 66 head angle. And the chainstays are a nice versatile number at 435 or 437, depending on which flip chip position you're in. So overall, I think the Trek is a really good bike for the money and it's definitely gonna really excel in a lot of Australian conditions. And it also excels in really loose, rocky terrain. So if you've got more slower, technical, loose, rocky stuff, I feel like the fuel is gonna serve you very well. And if you live in Australia and you've also got private health insurance with Bupa, you get a 15% discount of recommended retail price. So that's a pretty good discount on these bikes. So onto the next bike, it's another repeat, and that's the Merida 14700. And the spec on this bike is absolutely crazy for the money. So the 14700 is definitely gonna suit someone that's diehard on 27.5 inch wheels and would potentially look at a frame swap in the future because the spec is that great on this bike. So you get the, so you get the new SLX 12 speed drivetrain as well as SLX four pots. This new stuff's amazing and it's definitely worth getting. In terms of the suspension, you're getting the Revelation RC fork and that's got the shorter 37 millimeter offset as well as the RockShox Deluxe Select Plus in the rear. So as I said, you're getting absolutely awesome spec for the money with the 700 and if you can afford it over the 600 model, I definitely recommend it. So the next bike's another new one for 2020 and that's the Nuke Proof Reactor Comp. So if you live in Australia, your best bet's getting it from off the brakes and they'll be available in December and they're at a recommended retail price of $3,999. However, if you live in the UK, definitely Chain Reaction's gonna be your best bet and that's gonna be the best value for money. So the Reactor comes in both 29 inch as well as 27.5 inch wheels and the 29 has 130 millimeters of rear travel and the 27.5 has 140 millimeters of rear travel. So looking at the spec of the bike, starting with the suspension, you get the Super Deluxe R in the rear. So no lockout, however you are getting a piggyback shock, so that's awesome to see. Then up front, you've got the RockShox Revelation and that comes with 10 millimeters of extra travel compared to the rear. Looking at the drivetrain, you've got SX Eagle as well as Guide T brakes. So again, not my favorite brakes, but they'll do the job. So a real spec highlight is the tires that you get on the bike. So you get an Asagai Exo Plus 3C Max Terra, and then in the rear, you've got a DHR Exo Plus Max Terra as well. So it definitely really sets the priorities of this bike. It's gonna be a really good descender. You also get a good dropper too. So you get size specific drops, but they're nice long drops on this bike. So you got the RockShox Reverb with a one by lever. And then on the size large, you got a 175 millimeter drop. So that's awesome to see. And as always with Nuke Proof bikes, you also get the cool Nuke Proof finishing kit. So that's awesome to see. So the Geo is pretty dialed too. And like the Trek, you get a flip chip. So in the high setting, you've got a 66 degree head angle, 75.5 degree seat angle. And then in the low position, you've got a 65.5 degree head angle and 75 seat angle. And the reach is nice and long too at 480 millimeters on the size large, so that's awesome to see. And the chainstays are nice and balanced with this. So you've got a nice long reach, but the chainstays aren't too short. You've got 440 millimeters chainstays there. So that's nice and balanced on this bike. So this bike really is built for shredding the descents. So if you're a rider that definitely prefers their descents over the climbs, then this is the bike for you. So we're finally getting towards the end of the list and we're getting towards some pretty decent money here. So this is one for really the enthusiasts that are looking to kind of get their best bang for buck. And the first bike is the Common Style Meta TR Ride. So having ridden and reviewed a few of the Common Styles, they're definitely beastie bulletproof bikes and they love to descent. So if that's your priority and you like it rough, then these are the bikes for you. 
So the spec's pretty decent for the money. So you're getting 150 millimeter Revelation RC up front, and then you've got a Select Plus Deluxe Rear Shock managing the 130 millimeters of rear travel. You get an NX Eagle drivetrain with GX Eagle cranks, so it's good to see you get some lighter cranks on there. And then you've got a good set of E13 wheels, and they're wrapped in some really good tires. So you've got a Magic Mary up front, and a hands damp in the rear, both in the soft compound. You also get a KS 150mm dropper on the size large too, so that's good to see. One downside in the spec, you get SRAM level T brakes, which I'd change straight away. This bike's gonna want you to go fast, and you want some decent brakes to pull you up. So the Geo's pretty dialed, and it's probably my favorite on this list. So in the size large, you got a 76 degree seat angle, 66.5 degree head angle, and then a nice roomy 475mm reach, with decently short slash moderate 434 millimeter chainstays. So other than the brakes, if it was my money, the two bikes that I'd probably pick from is the Common Cell Meta or the Nuke Proof Reactor. Toss up between those two, and they'd probably be my two favorite, as I said. Okay, so we're finally at the end of the list. This one's a bit more for our UK viewers again. However, with import tax, it's still relatively good value for Australians. So if you're in the UK, definitely take advantage of this bike. And that's the Vetus Escarp VR. So the Escarp is the burlier brother of the Mythic, coming in both 27.5 and 29 inch wheels. So it's good to give you the option there. Again, all sizes in both wheel sizes. So looking at the 29er, because that's generally my pick, the Geo is definitely built for more high speed stability. So you've got decently long chain stays at 450 millimeters and a 66.5 degree head angle. So it also has a 75 degree seat angle and the reach, nothing too crazy, but still roomy. And that's 467 millimeters on the size large. So the Escarp really demands bigger terrain than most of the bikes on this list. Wants high speeds and that's reflected in the spec. So you get 150 millimeter RockShox Lyric up front. So a really stiff fork and it's a fork that you typically see on enduro bikes. And then you've got 140 millimeters of rear travel. And this aggressive nature of the bikes also reflected in the tire choice too. So you get an Asagai as well as a DHR and they both come in the Max Terra compound and then you've also got a 200mm rotor up front. Like a few of the other bikes on this list, it's let down by its brakes a little bit. So you do have guide tees, although that 200mm rotor will give you enough power, but I definitely prefer having some different brakes on here. Then looking at the rest of the spec, you get a 150mm Brand X dropper, so decent drop there. NX Eagle drivetrain, as well as nuke proof finishing kit. So like on all the Vetus and Nukeproof bikes, you're getting decent finishing kit on it too. And there you go, we're done. Those are my top 10 best all mountain slash mid travel trail bikes for this year. So some awesome bikes for the money that you're gonna be getting this year. So definitely check all these bikes out if you're looking for a great value package for a new bike. So as I said earlier, the prices will vary depending on which market you're in. And Australian dollars, it's gonna seem a little bit more expensive compared to where you are in the world, especially if you're in Europe or America, it's gonna seem a bit more expensive. But if there's definitely any bikes that you feel like I've missed out, definitely leave a comment below and I'll put it in the pinned comments. I will also have my Enduro Bike Buyers Guide coming soon, so a few more longer travel bikes for the people that want to push their riding a bit more. So definitely subscribe if you don't want to miss that. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.